Discounted Cash Flow Model. Let's look at the components of a DCF model. It has everything that we covered in the three statement financial model. Plus, layered on top of that, it has the calculation of free cash flow, either levered or unlevered, meaning either to the equity investors or to the entire firm. In addition to that, we're also going to have to calculate a terminal value. We'll have to make assumptions about the cost of capital or discount rate that's used in the model. And then we can calculate the net present value using XNPV in Excel, as well as calculate the internal rate of return using XIRR in Excel. Let's discuss the purpose of a DCF model. There are many purposes to value a business, a project, or an investment, to determine how much to pay for an acquisition, to assess the impact of a strategic initiative at a business, such as a cost-saving program or entering a new market, to use for internal financial planning and analysis purposes, such as budgeting and forecasting, and for valuing a company to raise money, such as debt or equity. If you want to learn how to build a DCF model from scratch, you can take any of these courses where we cover the building of a DCF model step by step. If you just want to work with a template or modify an existing example, then you've come to the right spot in this course. Here we are inside the DCF model. It has a cover page as usual, which describes what the model contains and has a table of contents that we can click on to flow through to the rest of the model. It's organized in the same way as a three statement model with assumptions, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, etc. The only difference is that this time we have a DCF model on top of the three statement model. Let's open up all of the sections and take a closer look. These are the assumptions that drive the forecast, which flow through to the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, and drive the supporting schedules, which flow back into these three financial statements. And then below that, we have the DCF model. The DCF model is driven by these assumptions here. These assumptions will help us calculate the free cash flow of the transaction, the terminal value, the intrinsic value of the business, which is the net present value or discounted cash flow. We can compare that to the market value and we can calculate the internal rate of return of buying and holding the stock and the target price upside, which is the difference between the intrinsic value and the market value. Below that, we have some charts and graphs, a chart of the free cash flow that's generated by the business over the forecast period, and a waterfall chart that shows the difference between the market value and the intrinsic value of the business, with the difference being the upside. So as you can see, it's a very cleanly laid out financial model with a simple and straightforward DCF section. It uses XNPV and XIRR, so the calculation is extremely precise with specific dates. In the next lesson, we're going to take a closer look at how each of the assumptions actually drive the model for the discounted cash flow analysis. Let's take a look at how each of these assumptions flow through the model. Let's start with the tax rate. If we go to formulas and trace dependence, we can see that the cash taxes are calculated here. And these are different than the taxes on the income statement because we've calculated an unlevered free cash flow of the business by adding back interest expense. Let's remove those. Then we have the discount rate. The discount rate affects the terminal value with a perpetual growth rate method, and it affects the intrinsic value because it's the discount rate used in calculating net present value. The perpetual growth rate is impacted by the perpetual growth rate assumption. Then we have the EV to EBITDA exit multiple of seven times. Then we have the start date of the transaction, which is the date we assume that you buy the shares or buy the entire company. Then you have the fiscal year end. So the first fiscal year end after buying the company is this period here. It then drives a year frac calculation or stub period. Because the investor is not getting a full fiscal year 
of investing, they only get half a year. This is a stub period. So they only get half of the cash flow in that period, but then they get a full period for all of the following years. So this model takes into account the timing of when an investor buys the business relative to the cash flow. Below that, we have the current share price. The current share price is used to calculate the market cap and the market value of the business. And then finally below that, we have a shares outstanding assumption. The shares outstanding assumption is used to calculate the intrinsic value per share, as well as the market cap. And just to confirm that we're doing it correctly, recalculate the market value per share, which is the same as the assumption that's up here. Let's remove those arrows. So what you can see is that the net present value is based on the unlevered free cash flow of the business, according to these dates. And the internal rate of return is based on buying the stock at its current share price and holding it for this time period with a terminal value that's a function of the average of a perpetual growth rate and an EV to EBITDA multiple. So this model is very useful for calculating the value and the rate of return of buying this investment.